Welcome to an episode of the Self Storage Insight Podcast. I'm Ben Shirey, and today I'm joined by Bob Hazlitt with Open Tech Alliance. And Bob, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Super excited to learn a little bit more about Open Tech and uh, to hear some of the stuff you guys are working on over there. I'm excited to be here, and I appreciate the invitation uh, this morning, uh, Ben. I hope you have a really good session about um, all the topics that we're going to cover, and I look forward to addressing the audience today. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll kind of ju jump in with uh, what's your involvement with Open Tech and uh, how do you, how long have you been with the company? Uh, so my role at Open Tech, I'm the business development manager for the Northeast Territory at Open Tech. And the Northeast Territory extends uh, from Indiana and Kentucky in the West uh, over to Virginia and then up the mid-Atlantic states into Eastern Canada. So all told, I manage 22 states and provinces for open tech and uh, have about probably 8,000 or so facilities that I'm responsible for. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Pretty, pretty big range there. That's a, a big yeah, area. It sure is. That's a lot of ground to cover. Awesome. And uh, so if you don't mind, can you maybe bring us up to speed a little bit on open tech? What do you guys offer? What are some of the things that you guys are releasing that's been doing well in the market? So at Open Tech, our focus is technology solutions for the self-storage industry that feed into ease of management and re remote facility management, which has become very popular now uh, post-pandemic. So our tools sure. are designed around making it easy to run the facility uh, for not only the operators, but for the tenants that come into the facility. Uh, we offer uh, a bunch of different services that you know include self-service kiosks, which uh, enable 24-7 rentals of units at the facility or provide a great offload for busy facilities where folks don't have to stand in line for 45 minutes to see the staff and they could just use the kiosk to make their payment or rent a unit. Uh, we also offer call center services uh, for companies that um, want to make sure that every call is answered by a live person. Uh, we find that this is critical to you know, keeping the occupancy full at the facility and making sure that everybody gets a personal touch. Our mm -hmm. access control systems are the best in the industry. Uh, our CIA is very popular, and uh, we started with a clean sheet of paper and built you know, the best system in the industry. Uh, we've recently introduced smart locks uh, to compete with uh, Nokia and others out there. And for the smart locks, uh, they integrate with our access control system to bring security and um, ease of management to the facility. And also, um, we designed our locks and waited before um, we actually developed our products so that we could get feedback from the industry for those things that the folks that bought the earlier technology didn't like. So we mm -hmm. cover a large range of uh, of products and services for the industry. And, um, you know, it's been very good for me at Open Tech and I appreciate everybody out there that, that uses Open Tech. Awesome. Yeah, you guys are doing a lot of stuff and uh, making making some big moves. Uh, talk to me a little bit more maybe about the smart locks. How have they been performing in the industry? Is that something that, you know, you see is going to take up a big part of the space in the future? Or is it pretty much defined by, you know, the upper end facilities and or, you know, who all uses smart locks and how do they relate? So the smart lock technology wasn't introduced by Open Tech, but it's a great idea and a great concept mm -hmm. where you, you can control your facility, access control and individual units remotely where you don't have to have staff out there to schedule an appointment, to open a unit, uh, to cut a lock off. You know, that's all self-contained. Mm -hmm. uh, we really feel that, you know, where we're getting a lot of traction now, the locks work really well. And, you know, they, um, they're used primarily at this point because they've just been introduced here about a year ago at the fall SSA 2023 mm -hmm. um, in new build facilities. So it's easy to put those on when you're building the facility and capture that cost in the total financing of the, of the construction on the project. But, you know, we have folks that are also uh, adding locks that uh, they may do a building at a time. They may do the entire facility. And we even have folks that use strategies where they'll put the locks on vacant units. And as people move out, they'll add locks to the units so that, over several to many budget cycles, they've upgraded their their facilities to have the smart locks on them. I, I really believe that you know in the future that this will be the way that all facilities operate. Uh, every facility will have a smart lock, and we expect that over time the product will get better and the price will get better as well. 
Right. Yeah. As, as more, as more technology comes out, yeah, that's kind of the way, the way that normally goes. I was curious, yeah, mainly with the new build stuff, uh, that makes a lot of sense as far as building it into the price of, of the facility as you're building it. Um, is it, is it easier to implement a new facility as well with construction versus is it pretty hard to install at an existing location or is it uh, not a very hard install process? No, it's not a hard install process, but you know, when there, nobody's there and you're building a facility, um, you can order the doors without the hasp on it. And we can put the lock on as the locking mechanism and the hasp. But for existing facilities, yeah, we're, it's not intrusive. We can put the lock on the unit and not have to open the unit or be disruptive to the tenant in any way. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And do you guys see uh, more of that, I guess, as you had mentioned, is mo moving towards remote facilities uh, versus traditionally manned facilities where there's somebody on site that is going around and overlocking units and they don't have quite as much of a demand for that? I think that it, it depends. It's market base, right? And some of the markets uh, folks have gotten used to having fully manned facilities. Uh, in other markets, you know, they, they are moving towards that non-managed uh, facility or non-staff facility. So it really doesn't matter which model that you're using. There's a role for the smart lock in whatever operational model that you're using at the facility. Right. And it probably comes with some marketing benefits as well for the facility, right? In terms of being able to promote that they have smart locks and that they're, they're a more modern um, feel of a facility. Do you, do you see any anything or do you guys track any data there on how those facilities lease up versus a facility that doesn't introduce new technology like that? Well, for the open tech locks, uh, it's not been you know in the market long enough to be able to capture a lot of data yet. But the early reports coming in are that, you know, folks like the locks. Uh, the perception is that, you know, it's cool, it's technology. And, um, you know, for non-old guys like me, you know, the folks coming up, that's what they grew up on was technology, and they think it's way cool. Um, they right. like being able to use their cell phone to access the unit, and they're all about, you know, new technology and easy use. Yeah. And on-demand self-service, of course. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, yeah, I don't have one at one of the places right across the road from my office. I have a key unit and I always forget my key. So <laughs> I definitely would appreciate <laughs> I would definitely appreciate it there. <laughs> yeah. So I guess uh, maybe we'll kind of transition here and talk about, you know, how do you guys integrate with software management? Uh, who are you integrated with and how does that how does that, that all tie together? Yeah. So just in our name, Open Tech, uh, we, we provide uh, application integrations to most of the uh, property management systems that are out in the market today, it's particularly the most popular ones. There are a lot of newcomers coming in, uh, great uh, solutions that they're building, but you know, over time, uh, you know, we get them integrated into our system. So we cover probably 85 to 90 percent of the systems that are out there. And as we have newcomers come in, our development team will work with their development team to make sure that there's a seamless application program interface so that customers that want to use that new system and that new technology have the ability to do so. If we want to work with folks, we have to do the integration. And so we have a, a very sharp development team that works with all the property management systems to make sure that folks that are using them have a seamless integration and have a great experience using the product. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, with CC storage, we're getting ready to integrate. So uh, excited about that. And uh, one, one, of the, well. <laughs> one, of, one of the things there that I kind of wanted to touch on was, you know, making sure that when somebody's uh, choosing their gate provider, their access provider, that that company is open to integrating with other softwares. Uh, because, you know, one of the things that, and I know we had discussed this uh, previously, Bob, was that, you know, a lot of people get kind of locked into their gate access and then they're stuck with the software that they have because other softwares haven't integrated with that gate access. And so you really end up without realizing it getting tied into a software relationship that you might not even want to be in for long term, but that's the only company that's integrated with your gate. So making sure that people are aware of that as they're choosing their gate access provider and, and you guys are integrating with more than most that I see for sure. So um, do you run into that a lot where that that's, you know, one of the things that comes up through the sales process or are people pretty much unaware that that even happens? No, I, I think that people, you know, may not realize when they choose a, a, a property management system that they're, they may get siloed into certain products. And uh, again, you know, I, I, recommend to everybody that do your deep dive, do your due diligence, make sure that, you know, for those services that you want to employ at the facility, that 
the property management system that you're looking at and that you like integrates across multiple lines of business because you can get yourself backed into a corner where you know you love the, the property management system but you want to take on a new solution from a vendor that doesn't have that integration and you're stuck so I, I just urge caution with that. But, you know, for open tech, we want to work with all of the folks that work in self-storage. We don't want to limit, you know, folks. We want to give choice and flexibility and allow people to do business the way they want to do business. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that, that about you guys. And, uh, yeah, I really like some of the stuff you're working on. One, one of the things that I, that I run into a lot when I'm working with a, a facility that's doing a gate install uh, with, with one of the other vendors that we currently work with is, you know, the ongoing support and having that support available uh, after the install is complete, whether it be training or whether it be, you know, just ongoing things that may come up over time with your gate. Uh, can you talk to me about maybe what you guys offer in terms of support and training with uh, your technology? Absolutely. I think that, you know, there's a, there's a tendency just in, in life in general and just with uh, people using systems that, they're going to use those things that are important to them. And it's like a, an iceberg in the ocean. You, they use just the tip of the iceberg, but there's so much more below the surface that they can be using. So in our products, in our gate access system and our other products, there's so much there baked in in terms of reporting, alerts, uh, information about your facilities. And for those companies that, that have multiple facilities that are using open tech, there's a dashboard that allows them to see the health at a glance of their facility and their gate access system. One of the things that's most important to me is that when we do the installation and we're ready to onboard and, and create that integration between our system and whatever property management system that the facility is using, that you know on that day when we do that onboarding we provide training to the facility users well their heads are spinning a lot of times because they just had to take on a brand new system that they're not familiar with so one of the nice things that we provide is documentation in terms of user guides and how to use that but i'll typically come back around after a company has taken on our access control system or other systems and schedule a meeting with them so that we can come back and, and do another round of that training and particularly want to be able to have them familiar with the reporting and how to set the alerts so that if something happens at the facility, they're going to get a text message or an email uh, alerting them that something's happened so that they can take action right away. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so important. And I mean, you're, you're spot on with, you know, following up, you know, a month later or a little bit later after they've had their, a little bit of time to wrap their head around everything that's going on. Cause yeah, that initial training call, we do it with, you know, the property management software side, uh, in terms of we do an initial training call before they would start, uh, you know, taking payments or whatever through the software. And then typically you see like two weeks later, you need to do another one. Cause now they understand the system a little bit better and you can't really you know, unlock all those features or unlock the potential of what all can be done there until you have at least a base knowledge of, of, you know, how the functionality, how, how the system works. So, so the follow-up stuff is so important and I've just ran into it so much where it's like, Hey, we got our gate installed and it's working and now I can't get a hold of anybody or, sure. uh, you know, and, and that's just been a, a common thing that I've heard. So I was, yeah, definitely curious to see how you guys handle that. Well, well, the great thing is when you come back around on that second round, and I'll do a third round. I mean, I want to make it open for my customers and the customers at Open Tech to be able to reach back to us anytime for any reason, right? And it's it's really rewarding to me to see on that second round or that third round where you see that aha moment with the user that it's like, wow, man, it is so cool, man. I didn't realize that that was in there. Um, you know, and then when you show them that it's like, okay, you know, you get a couple of those aha moments and then people want to, you know, dive in and they want to roll their sleeves up and know everything about that. And we're happy to help them with that. Um, but again, you know, we want to teach them how to fish and not feed them a fish every time so that they're self-sufficient mm -hmm. and we sure. provide excellent documentation and, you know, we have staff that are dedicated customer success managers to help them accomplish that mission. Awesome. On on the installation side, how do you guys handle the installation of the hardware? Do you work with like approved um, installers? Do you send installers on site? What what's kind of the standard process if somebody was going to purchase an open tech system? So it, it usually falls into a couple of different uh, scenarios, right? Uh, so they'll purchase the system, and I'm always asking them if they need installation help. One of the things that we have at Open Tech is we have a dealer network. 
And on our website, we have a dealer locator. So customers can self-serve, go to the Open Tech website at opentechalliance.com, uh, go to the resources tab and, and come under dealers and they can search for a dealer in their local area that they can talk to. But more often, they're, well, I'm asking folks because I'd like to be proactive and say, hey, do you have someone that's going, going to install this? Do you have a low voltage or do you have a, a vendor relationship already established? And many facilities that have been established already have those relationships. But I deal with a lot of new builds on, in my territory, and those folks are brand new to the business. So they haven't had the opportunity yet to establish those relationships. And I'll recommend them, you know, two or three dealers and connect them with dealers that, you know, I know and trust that do a great job that they can reach out to, maybe have the dealer come out and do a site walk on the facility and then provide an estimate to the facility operator for the installation of the equipment. Mm -hmm. All of our dealers can sell the equipment as well so that they can have, you know, one stop shopping, if you will. And one throat to choke, one check to cut, you know, things like that. But, you know, effectively what I want to do is I want to put people together to build a successful implementation and a great customer experience. And if they need that help, I'm happy to provide that every time. Right. Awesome. Yeah. And it's nice to have some hands-on uh, assistance from people that have connections as well. You know, for those new build facilities, they, they don't know who all to contact yet, or they don't even know where to begin in some of this, in some of the sense for, for these processes. Um, as far as, you know, I, I know in my local area, uh, like uh, gate and fence installers are getting thinner and thinner. It's a job that not a lot of people like, and it's getting more and more expensive because the competition's going down. Um, so having somebody that, that may have some additional connections, you know, from a little bit outside of your area that's willing to travel into can make a big difference in terms of the pricing that you get and, and the, the level of service and that sort of thing as well. Um, hundred percent on that. Uh, and the other thing with that is that for folks that, you know, are handy or they, you know, they, they may have an electrical business or they're a tradesperson. We have installation guides that we can send to them that they're not small phone books. There may be 10 or 11 pages with diagrams uh, included in there so that if they wanted to take that on themselves, they have the ability to do that. If they have a local vendor that they're working with that maybe hasn't installed open tech in the past, those guides are handy for those folks. And then, um, you know, if they, if they want to, um, you know, if they want to contract that out, then they have that, that they can provide to, a contractor that they may find with that. Mm -hmm. So we, again, we're providing support. There's tech support for uh, day of install. Um, we're providing all the tools to make it as easy as possible to succeed with open tech. Awesome. Yeah. That's nice that you give them the options too. Cause I've seen other companies that don't give them options. You have to go through a certified installer. Uh, and I've worked with some facilities where they're like, Oh, I'm pretty handy. I'm sure I could figure this out. I've installed gates before and controllers and things and, and they still won't let them do it. And so, you know, uh, it's nice to have that flexibility. That's awesome. Well, and, and, you know, the, the bad side of that is, is that I get so many people that, well, not so many, but I get people that say, you know, I'm going to take this on and they get, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, elbow deep into it. And then they got to call uncle. Right. So that's <laughs> where we have our tech support team that can kind of, you know, get them out of trouble or, you know, phone a friend or have a lifeline. It tends right. to work out really well. And, you know, again, it's all about setting people up for success and giving them the way to do business that they want to do business in. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you, do you have any information too, that you could share maybe in terms of like, I don't know, like, in terms of upgrading a facility because you're going to sell it or for whatever reason, you know, a lot of the, a lot of uh, people that buy facilities then upgrade them and then turn, you know, flip them. Um, is, is a gate a big part of that in terms of one of the main upgrades that you'd see uh, a facility is going to add, you know, recently since with all the COVID and the remote access and all of that, um, how, bi how big of an upswing, I guess, in the market have you seen in gate access over the past five years? Well, when I, I started with the company, I've been with Open Tech three years. And when I started out, there were there were still a lot of facilities or in my territory, in the Midwest especially, that didn't have gates uh, at their facilities. They've been operating the same way for a very long time. And then COVID hit and the pandemic hit. And that changed a lot of attitudes. And then uh, because they wanted to bring an additional level of security. And I'm I'm, you know, believing that the tenant base had driven that request, right? You know, they want right. to know that their things are safe because a lot of folks had to take a, a room in their house that they use for something else and they had to store their belongings to turn that into a classroom or, or an office, right? Mm -hmm. So they want to know that those personal possessions are safe. The, um, the industry is changing a little bit and, you know, we want to make sure that we're able to accommodate those needs for folks that, you know, want to make sure that things are, are you know, protected. 
the um, facilities that are coming in now, of course, we're seeing a lot of consolidation in the self storage industry. The, you know, the small mom and pops are getting gobbled up by, you know, mid mid tier companies. And then the REITs are just, you know, buying everything in sight. It feels like, you know, they're not, yeah. but they're buying a lot of, uh, so the, the industry was highly fragmented and now it's coming into a consolidation where at some point, and I don't know how long this will take that you're going to have an industry like the airlines is dominated by a handful of massive players and you know a few smalls so that's probably many years from now but that's happening at an increasingly uh, increasingly fast pace mm -hmm. yeah what are what are what are some of the things i guess that sets open tech apart what are some of the main things that uh, would be like your main selling points in terms of the things that differentiate you from your competitors uh, easy use is, is one of those. And then uh, the reporting and the alerts that we have, um, you know, that's very important is now we're seeing folks come into the industry that are coming from Wall Street. They're more financial analysts. They're data driven. So they mm -hmm. want to be able to take those inputs that come off of our system and to identify customer behavior and then use those inputs to be able to modify their operations to deliver an unbelievable customer experience that adds value you know, to their facility and, you know, allows people to, um, you know, really, again, do business the way that they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, in terms of, yeah, security, ease of use, uh, those are some of the, some of the main things too, that I, that I hear in terms of questions that are being asked when people are renting storage facilities, right? As far as the last time that I had looked, it was like the top three questions were availability, price, and security in terms of questions that, you know, potential renters are asking when they're calling facilities. Um, and so security being up there at the top of the things that people care about, the access obviously is a huge part of that in terms of, you know, how you can access the facility. Uh, hours of operations. Uh, you guys are pretty much completely customizable too in terms of uh, allowing certain renters to have 24-hour access. You can have different levels, security levels, all of that stuff. That's right. Again, you know, there are businesses that operate out of self-storage facilities as their warehouse or, mm -hmm. you know, their assembly, if you will. So there are needs for uh, certain customers have 24-hour access and we're able to segregate those off, you know, to provide them access after the gates would normally close at the end of the day for everybody else. The other things that we offer that really make it attractive is that we offer mobile applications that provide access to the facility. So there's a tenant app called Storage Genie that all of our access control uh, keypads have Bluetooth sensors in there. So as the folks approach the, the gate, and this is a direct result of COVID, um, they're able to connect through the Bluetooth. They don't have to roll their window down. It will look into there and say, hey, I've got Ben Shirey here coming into the facility. Is he eligible? And then is he paid? Mm -hmm. and, and, and if it is, it's going to date stamp and time stamp, open the gate without you having to roll down the window or touch the keys. And the same thing on the way going out of the gate as well. Mm -hmm. On the management side, we have a manager genie that allows a regional manager who may be, you know, responsible for six to eight different facilities to be able to control the access at, at each one of those facilities from the mobile app. So where we see real application on that is when you get a, a winter day where you've got ice or you've got a big snowfall and you don't want to send your facility manager out the, to the facility and put their life on the line just to get there and shut it down to come back home. You can put a message on the keypad saying that the facility is closed due to inclement weather with a number to call, and you can lock down the facility without having to leave the house. You can do it from your kitchen table nice. if you like. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot, a lot of flexibility there then. Yeah, that's that's very nice. Um, yeah, that sounds like you guys are, are, are doing some awesome things. And uh, if somebody wanted to reach out to you specifically to kind of uh, get the ball rolling with getting a quote or uh, just to make a connection, learn more about what you guys offer, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is, is again, you can come through the website. All of our uh, representatives are there at OpenTech. So depending on where your facility is headquartered, there's a map and it has a contact information for all of the business development managers and the customer success managers for a given area. A anyone can reach out to me anytime at, you know, at bhazlett at opentechalliance.com, or they can feel free to call me at 480-499-8243. And I'll talk okay. to anybody and I'm not trying to sell them anything. I want to help them succeed in their business. 
Right, for sure. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, we'll make sure we put your email address and uh, the, some contact info in, in the show notes as well or the description uh, at the bottom of the podcast here. Um, yeah, I guess last thing, and maybe, maybe we won't throw this in if you don't want to talk about it, but like any crazy experiences that you've ran into uh, while working with storage facilities? Well, the, the one crazy, crazy experience that I had is uh, I was at a facility in Ohio. And I met up with a regional manager and we did a little site walk through the facility and uh, we, we came up on a unit as we were walking by that had a bunch of sunflower seed uh, kernels out there. And it's like, well, that's kind of strange, right? And so that prompted the, the uh, regional manager to walk over to the, to the door and he pretty quickly discovered that the hasp had been uh, cut off or altered where, you know, it looked like it was locked, but it wasn't. He popped the door open and someone was living in the unit. And they had that unit tricked out. I mean, it was like better than some apartments that I've seen. They had everything <laughs> that they needed in there, the little fridge, you know, lights and all of that. And then we discovered that they had a large extension cord in there that they could stretch out and plug into an outlet that they had discovered on the facility and nobody knew. Wow. They kept paying their bill and, you know, kept accessing the facility. And uh, it was, it, that, that was kind of crazy. I just hadn't seen that before and didn't expect that, but you know, given the times that we're in now, uh, desperate times, uh, you know, for desperate <laughs> measures. But you know, those sure. are things that the, um, you know, that the technology now with smart locks and access control, you know, prevents a lot of that. Yeah, for sure. That, that definitely plays a big part. And I mean, I, I've actually heard that a lot from different owners where they've had an instance where somebody was trying to live in a unit. And, it, and it, you know, that's just one of the things where, you know, people come into storage with the misconception that, oh, it's just easy money. Um, there's actually some ma management that goes into it and uh, making sure that you're keeping your facility safe and locked up and uh, operating smoothly. It's a little bit it's a little bit harder, I think, on the on the surface than people realize uh, just from what they've heard. It, it does. It takes a commitment and, you know, it's not set it and forget it, right? You have to, you know, make sure that there's surveillance at the facilities and give yourself every opportunity to, you know, prevent any, just risk manage the facilities, you know, put all the tools in place that make it easy to remotely manage that or, you know, after hours to make sure that you've got security there so that, you know, folks can't come in there and damage your reputation or your facility. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much, Bob, for joining me today and for sharing some of the stuff you guys are working on and, and a lot of good information you provided there. So uh, just thank you so much for your time and uh, look forward to having you back on and we'll discuss some other some other features and things that you guys are working on as well. So absolutely. Thanks for inviting me today, Ben, and I look forward to our next conversation. Good deal. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Self Storage Insight Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Just a quick reminder, this episode was brought to you by CC Storage. CC Storage is a no-cost property management software that allows you to pass the fees for credit card processing onto your tenants, freeing up some CapEx space for your business and helping you more efficiently run your storage facility. If you'd like to learn more about CC Storage, click the link in the description below, and we hope to see you again for our next episode.